Hi, I'm Zach. Thank you for watching. I'm going to do one of my favorite recipes for the cast iron Dutch oven. I'm dedicating it to my mother, who just got a cast iron Dutch oven for Christmas. Hey, hey, slow down. Hey, Mom. Hi. I love you. Um, Alright, so it's a simple bread. You don't need to knead it. It's a fairly popular recipe, made popular by Jim LaHaye um, and Mark Bittman. This is kind of the Alton Brown variation of it. So all you do is you take 17 and a half ounces of flour, uh, that's by weight. Uh, you could just measure it about four cups of flour. I'm, I have, it's fairly flexible. I'm using bread flour and whole wheat flour because I am trying to get rid of all my whole wheat flour. Um, so I've got 12 ounces of bread flour and the rest up to 17 and a half ounces of whole wheat. You have 12 ounces of water. You need two and a half teaspoons of salt and I'm using instant yeast which just went everywhere about half a teaspoon it doesn't have to be that exact of instant yeast you could buy a packet and just scoop it out of the packets I have this jar because I do a lot of baking you just kinda mix it up quick Put in your 12 ounces of water, it's a cup and a half, and then you don't even need to knead it, you just mix it with a big spoon or a spatula until it's pretty homogenous. Once you get it into a lump there, now the reason why you don't have to knead it is because you let this rest for a really long time. Uh, it's suggested for 18 hours, you can go all the way up to 24 hours or more. Or you could do it as quick as 8 hours, depending on how room the warm is that you're leaving it in. Now my house is pretty cold, so I am probably going to leave it for a full 24 hours, we'll see. Or I'll find a warm spot to park in. So just put saran wrap over the top, and leave it for between 8 and 24 hours. The longer the better. So. That's the first part, and I'll see you tomorrow when I do the second part. Alright, well, it's tomorrow already. It's been about 19 hours that I've let it rise. So, this is the dough. This is what it looks like. It's nice and jiggly and wet and sticky as you'll ever want a dough to be. So, this part is uh, relatively easy. You're going to take some flour. Just kind of get it on top. Make sure you get a little on your hands, and you're just going to want to... Kind of punch it down a little bit. There's no actual punching involved. You just kind of want to take all that inflation that it did and take it down. That's pretty good. Don't want to overwork it. And you're just going to let this rest for 15 minutes. So I have my timer here. Set to 15 minutes. Bam. 15 minutes, let it rise, uncovered, and uh, then we're gonna shape it and give it a second rise. All right, it's been 15 minutes now, so we're gonna shape this and let it rise for another two hours. So you're gonna need some cornmeal. If you don't have cornmeal, you could probably use uh, some flour if you wanted to. I've only ever used cornmeal because it's nice and coarse. Nothing really sticks to it. And you can use a sill pad like I'm using here, or you could use, um, you know, like a, a dish towel or a tea towel, kitchen towel of some sort. I want to put a little more flour on the bread. Well, it's not bread yet, it's just dough. You're going to pick it up and you're going to shape it into a ball. It's going to be a little difficult. It's going to stick to your hands a little bit. And you're just going to want to keep tucking the insides out on itself, kind of like a jellyfish. You need a little more flour. You don't have to be shy with it because it's a really wet dough and you're definitely not going to overflower it. So just kind of shape it into this nice little dough ball here. It's not too bad. And plop it right on top of your cornmeal. Put a little more cornmeal on top. That way when you put your tea towel over it, it won't stick, and you're going to give that two hours, 
but because you want to make sure to preheat the oven before this is done rising, I'm going to set it to an hour and a half, and an hour and a half, I'm going to come turn, turn the oven on and give it another half hour to rise. Now, speaking of turning the oven on, you're going to, need to cook this in a vessel of some sort. So, I recommend, of course, the big, heavy, cast iron Dutch oven. It's my favorite. But you could also use any sort of oven-proof heavy pot. It doesn't have to be a heavy pot, but an oven-proof pot with a lid. Uh, this one's oven-proof. Glass will go in, metal will go in. It's all metal and glass. This one's not oven-proof because it's got the little plastic knob and the plastic handle, so it's pretty easy. You just unscrew this. Don't put this in the oven. It'll melt. As far as these go, you can use a screwdriver and take these off pretty easily. Most old pan pots will probably have these plastic things on it that you want to take off. Um, and I think they're making more pots nowadays, more like the 7 proof one. But if you do have an old one, go ahead and use it. Uh, have it by your side so that when this is done rising over the hour and a half, you're going to put the pot in the oven and preheat it with the oven. And in an hour and a half, you're going to turn the oven to I believe it's 450 degrees, so I'll see you in an hour and a half. Alright, it's been an hour and a half. I reset my timer to 30 minutes. I am going to take an empty pot, put it in the oven. I'm going to set the oven to 450 degrees. and give this another half hour to rise. So now you're going to want to make sure you have a set of oven mitts on hand because you're gonna to have to take the pot out to get the dough in the pot. And you're gonna to wanna to make sure, if you want, have a serrated knife. And later on you could put some slices on it if you want. Give it a design, some people give it a box, some people give it a clamshell, or whatever you want. Or you can just leave it the way it is. I've done it both ways. So if you're gonna have that, keep it on hand. Do that in half an hour when it's done rising and then we'll get it in the oven. All right, time to bake. So, I'm going to uncover the bread. I am going to put just a shallow clamshell design into it, because I think it makes the bread turn out awfully pretty in the end. Go ahead, get your mitts on. Get the pot out of the oven. going to do is you're going to take the bread and you're going to kind of flip it upside down a little bit. That way you can get it back upside up inside the pot. Just so you can see. Let me grab that and show you. It's in the pot. It's alright if it looks a little smushed or a little ugly. It'll all look nice in the end. Get it in there. Get the lid on. In the oven. Give it 30 minutes with the lid on. We're going to come back in 30 minutes, take the lid off, give it another 15 minutes, and we're going to have some nice rustic bread. Bread is done baking. So, mm, it smells so good. Can't wait to eat it. But you have to be patient and wait at least an hour. You scoop it out as best as you can. Make sure to get it on your wire rack. You look at that pretty design I tried to put on it. Not too bad. So that is how you make no-knead sourdough bread. And like I said earlier, you can do all sorts of variations on it. You could do different types of flour. I've done it with um, all-purpose flour. This time I like using bread flour and whole wheat flour. I've done with strong coffee instead of water. That gives it kind of a nice color and an interesting flavor. I've put green tea leaves in it, all sorts of things. So don't be afraid to experiment with it. It's a lot of fun. 
Uh, when it comes out of the oven, just make sure to give it a, you know an hour or two before cutting into it, and enjoy.